Shalom, Yah Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Yasharala. Kol Haloyim La Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Harakakwadash. For blessing our elders with the spirit of truth, so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwath that's keeping the faith in the work. Shall keep at it. This is your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. It's the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, and verse 13. It says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of power, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of power. All right? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. All right? Evil times are, are, are here. All right? The dawn of Babylon, um, whether it be um, on purpose or not. I would lean more so towards the own purpose because we understand that the devil operates um, out of um, order, out of chaos, right? Um, and we always understood, uh, have understood that, you know what I'm saying, the whole plot of this so-called world that we live in is leading to a new world, right? It's on your dollars, if you got a dollar bill, look on the back of it, you'll see all the, you know, the Freemason signs and so forth and so on. But it's literally written on your money. That's what that Latin is on the back. It's telling you. One, uh, one phrase is out of many one. And the other phrase is basically new order seclorum, which is new order of the ages or new world order. All right. So it's always been the plan for, you know, the people who really in charge to take this world that we live in so-called and, and move it to a, a new image, right? That image that's spoken of in Revelation 13. But the people that's going to feel the effects of it the worst are the most highest people. The majority of the most highest people, right? Because they don't have the covering of the armor of the most high. They don't have the covering of the blood of your house shot, right? They, they, their mindset has truly led them to believe that the world that they live in has their best interests in heart and they finna find out the hard way that's not so all right so with that being said man i'm gonna let this video play and i'll be back Tomorrow is the day that Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen expects the United States to hit the debt ceiling, which means the government would not be able to borrow more money to meet its obligations without extraordinary measures. But how does this financial cliff impact Americans at home? And Marie has a look. Yeah, so we're going to give you a, an idea of how this all works. The Federal Reserve will begin implementing a so-called extraordinary measures to stay below the debt ceiling. One of the first steps is halting contributions to certain government pension funds and redeeming bonds that are held in federal employees' retirement funds. Now, the Treasury Department is required by law to eventually replace those investments with interest after the crisis is resolved. But in the short term, federal employees and those pension funds will see their retirement accounts take a bit of a hit. But even if these uh, measures buy maybe a few more months to work out a deal, there could be financial consequences as the debate drags on. The 2011 debt limit co debate cost taxpayers $1.3 billion because of raised borrowing costs for the Treasury Department. And it caused the U.S.'s first ever credit downgrade. Americans also saw an impact on their personal finances. There you go. I have their accounts, uh, their mortgage, auto, and personal loan interest rates all went up during the crisis, and it took months to recover. Household wealth fell $2.4 trillion between the second and the third quarter of 2011 because of stock market declines caused by the uncertainty during this period. Now, I can recall in, in the space between 2008 and 2000, roughly about 2008, 2010, 2011, something like that. The economy got extremely bad, 
But I'm talking about so many people lost their job. I was one of because of shutdowns, because of basically the production of certain things just weren't being produced anymore. I worked at a plant that produced bricks at the time, and the housing market took a hit that was so bad, they halted the production of houses, right? So the whole plant that I worked at, had, it, it, it got shut down, and so many other places across the door of Babylon took the same hit. That was, I mean, extremely bad. The price of everything was sky high. Nobody could afford anything. And what they saying is that was the daughter of Babylon moving towards, right, a debt cap. Not them actually being in it, just moving towards it. And now they saying that the daughter of Babylon has reached their cap and they can't borrow no more. So now they got to figure out a way to try to get some more funds, which is <laughs> crazy, right? So what they're saying is basically what you saw in 2008, 2009, 2010, so forth and so on, that was a cakewalk to what you finna be uh, uh, introduced to. And what you finna be introduced to is finna be hell, right? Let me see Jeremiah chapter 30 and uh, verse 5. It says, For thus said Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Right? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. The he that shall be saved out of Jacob's trouble are the ones that are found written in the book of life. Everybody else, you're going to be terrified like a man, like right? Like a man that travails with child. No man has a child. So it's going to be a brand new type of fear. It's going to be a brand new type of pain, and it's going to be extremely right, painful. It's going to be something this world ain't never seen before, right? All of this happened when... There you go. All of this happened when the U.S. got close to, just close to reaching the debt limit. If it actually happened, the U.S. would not be able to pay for all of the government programs or make any payments to its creditors. And that includes no Social Security and Medicare payments, federal and military. That lady just said no Social, social Security. So that, that's all your grandmamas and granddads, right, who been stopped working. And probably don't have a pension. Probably ain't got no 401k. As a matter of fact, even if they do got a pension or a 401k, they saying that it's going to tap into that too. They literally are going to start going into people's accounts and taking out money, man. That's what they saying is about to happen. Right? And on top of all of this, in the background, you got central bank and digital currencies steadily being released on the earth. That's why I say I would lean more towards they they, they doing this on purpose. There's some auto op KO. So the the so the, the chaos is the economy going to shit. The order is we got a solution. Revelation thirteen <laughs> and everything that comes with it. Right and, and real talk, you how about you know Shai Rochas are this is what's going on. All right. Employees wouldn't get paid, and any program that gets government money, like the National Weather Service, would be without funding. There would also be major macro economic consequences as well. Moody's Analytics estimates the GDP would drop by nearly 4%, nearly 6 million jobs would be lost, and household wealth would drop by $15 trillion because of the stock market fallout. Secretary Yellen predicts that X date when the U.S. would exhaust emergency measures, could be in June, giving Congress about five months to avert an economic meltdown. All right, so like I said, how about you, Ram Shah out there? Ain't no, ain't no bouncing back from that. They gone ahead and introduced the central banking, digital currency, and all of the rest of the end time prophecies, you know, get amped up because we can see what's ahead, right? We have on the armor of the Most High. The Most High gave us the eye salve to be able to see the prophecies and to, and to be able to see 
the light at the end of the tunnel, and it ain't got nothing to do with the prosperity of the daughter of Babylon. It got everything to do with the fall of this place. But before this place fall, we're going to have to go through a bit of hell, and the hell going to be something so serious. All right? So this is the book of Second Edges, chapter 15, and verse 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draws nigh. And one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Right? Like, um, like a woman in travail, right? It says, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Right? And, and, and like I said, most are willing. That's what we witnessed in the beginning of, of this. Right? Because we have to go through this. That's, that's the whole point. The real order comes after the chaos, but it ain't got nothing to do with Esau's hand uh, bringing that so-called order. We're talking about Yahweh's hand, his right hand, as a matter of fact, bringing that order. Right? Uh, let me go to uh, the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 15 says that day is a day of wrath a day of trouble and distress uh actually let me start at 14 it says the great day of yahweh is near it is near and hasteth greatly even the voice of the day of yahweh the mighty man shall cry there bitterly right there we go again as a as a woman in travail it's gonna be bad Right, it says that that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. Right, And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against Yahweh and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dawn. Now, this is more so speaking about the day of the Lord, but. Jacob's trouble and the day of the Lord go hand in hand, right? I'm going to show you why. It's the book of Daniel, chapter 12, and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Right? It goes hand in hand. And we are seeing Yahweh Shimon Sharat the beginnings of this. That's why I say, man, man, most high willing, man, ain't no bouncing back from this. Most high willing, they go ahead and try to do everything that they that they set out to do. Because the most high say they're gonna fail at it, man. Right? Uh, let me see. Go to the book of Job. <sighs> Job chapter 20. And um let me see. Job chapter 20 and verse 23. Um, when he is about to fill his belly, power shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. Right. So while this devil is letting loose all of his wickedness on this earth through his through his chaos that he, you know, that the most high Yahweh allow him right to to let loose. Because Job 9, 24 says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Right? Given, meaning somebody had to give, meaning Yahweh had to give the wicked the earth. Scripture says the uh, um, the preparations in the heart of man and the answer of the tongue are from the Lord. Scripture says man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? So this really ain't the devil that's doing this. It's the most high that's doing this. Right? But we also understand that the most high is the most high of good and evil. Right, but anyway, when this devil is about to fully let his image loose on this earth, that image that's spoken of in Revelation 13, that image that's spoken of in Revelation 14, then comes destruction, like it says in Revelation 17, right? Through fire, <laughs> right? Straight like that, All right? So, um. 
think I'm going to end it there, man. I think the point got across, you know. Scripture says it's going to get pretty bad, man. And it's all going to be, all of it based off of technology and finances. All of it. When you go into Revelation 13, and they tell you that the devil going to introduce something to this world, that if you don't take, you won't be able to buy or sell. Right? That means it's technological and it's financial. Because something that has to be introduced into this earth, we're actually adding Second Thessalonians 2 with it too, where it says that the devil will try to place himself as the most high. How did the devil do that? It was through technology, right? Artificial intelligence and, you know, creating um, these different scientific, um, let me see, you know what I'm saying, electronics, things of such, to try to place himself as a as the creator, right? The creator of a, a false sense of life, right? So it lets you know that Revelation 13 and 2nd and Second Thessalonians just has something to do with techn technology and it has something to do um, with finances, all right, so yeah, how about Shemal Shirat is all this devil go ahead and let that thing loose right, while World War Three is still looming and it pops off even harder, right? And uh, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom pops off even harder because of the lack of bread, like it's spoken of in Second Ezra 15, right? So, hey, <laughs> gird up your lawns like a man. Make sure you keep the faith, keep them works, man. And um, now is the time to really be trying to get some understanding about uh, who the father is and who you are as it relates to him. Because otherwise, hey, you may be lined up for destruction. That's why we call ourselves the hopeful elect because we're hoping to be of the election of the saved. Right? We reading up on the prophecies and we seeing the prophecies unfold. So the Most High is allowing us to see these prophecies. And he's allowing us to work, right, faithfully and letting the people know of the prophecies. He's allowing us to work faithfully and, you know, trying to please Yahweh how he wants to be pleased and not how we say he wants to be pleased or not how your pastor say he wants to be pleased or not how your grandma say he wants to be pleased or your teachers or whoever it is on this earth that's telling you how you should go to the Father. If you read the book, Yahweh and you got understanding that that means that Yahweh is dealing with you. And Yahweh Shema Sharat is he's gonna deal with you until the end so that you can endure into the end and be saved. Right? So with that, Yahweh Shema Sharat is these precepts in this video were edifying. Call Holoyim La Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Harakak, Wadash, Shalom, Yashallah.